Salam and a warm welcome to everyone joining us today for Ecological Aesthetics, Visual Archives of Transformation in the Artwork of Marjan Bani, As Marjan Bani Asadi and Marjan Maryam Bani Asadi. Um, I'm Panis Musavina Tanzi, and uh, a postdoc at Dumesk and uh, the Duke University Islamic Studies Center. And I would like to extend a very warm welcome to our dear guests across three time zones today. Marjan Bani Asadi, who's joining us from Germany, Mariam, Mariam Bani Asadi and Professor Salima Hashmi, who are joining us from Pakistan, and Professor Negar Motahedeh and I, who are speaking to you from Turtle Island. Our wonderful audience is across even more time zones. Thank you so much for being with us here today in these particularly horrific times. As we center stage entanglements between Iran and Pakistan, I like to begin with a story of how I met Marjan and Maryam. In spring of 2016, I arrived in Lahore, Pakistan, to conduct interviews with Afghan students of visual arts and visual artists for my doctoral dissertation. At this time, I was living in Tehran and regularly traveling to Kabul. I came to know Mohsen Tasha, who was then a student at Beacon House National University in Lahore, through another student at the University of Tehran. She, the student at the University of Tehran, was born into a refugee family from Afghanistan and raised in Mahshad Gulshar in Iran. The day I met her in Tehran, she had just been suspended from her drawing class because the University of Tehran claimed that she was not a national student and had to pay the full tuition for international students as an Afghan. She became one of my best friends and on our journey and our journey took us together from Tehran to Gulshar and from Kabul to London. So when I met Mohsen in Lahore, whom she had introduced to me on the morning that I arrived in Pakistan, there were already a lot of stories we had to exchange about the ways in which we experienced the state of visual arts in Kabul, borders and the production of race across Iran, Pakistan and Afghanistan. I could tell you now that Mohsen, who is today a successful contemporary a miniature artist who creates thought provoking work, was like the person who introduced me to him, an interviewee and gatekeeper. But they were so much more than that. In conversation with each other, we exchanged, learned alongside one another, educated one another, disagreed, laughed, drank gallons of soy choy saps and Kashmiri chai, made jokes, supported each other with the means we had at hand, organized events, and introduced one another to intellectuals, artists, educators, and comrades. So instead of being shocked about the violence that carceral states are prepared to use against our neighbors, families, friends, and strangers, and ourselves, and the ways in which these states thrive in military industrial infrastructure, let us ask how we are connected and how we can build connections. This is something rather obvious to those who acknowledge Afghanistan from Gaza to Port-au-Prince, from Karachi to Cape Town, London, Berlin, and Paris. What does it mean when Pakistan and Iran show solidarity with our brothers and sisters in Gaza, while Pakistan currently expels with police violence, intimidation, and other means more than 2 million Afghans, and while the Islamic Republic news uh, agency IRNA said that Iran took alone in June 2023 90,000 Afghans to the border, among whom were deportees and people at their breaking point. What does that mean? All this while Afghanistan is facing, amongst others, food insecurity because of climate change and the environmental ramifications of decades of imperial warfare. And in October, consecutive earthquakes that killed thousands of people in Herat province with the blink of an eye. These are questions that the Afghan Reparation Collective invites us to ask. In spring 2016, Mohsen and I visited the graduate show at the National College of Arts where Mariam and Marjan did their Bachelor in Fine Arts and exhibited their beautiful works. And this is how I met Marjan and Mariam, and what followed was even more tea and conversations. 
I met Marjan and Mariam again in Tehran in uh, the same year, in 2016, for their first exhibition uh, together entitled A Present in Duality at Azad Art Gallery in Tehran. They in invited me to write a piece in English for Art Now Pakistan, which was translated also to Farsi and published with Azad Art Gallery. This event today is also a celebration of solidarity and of the invaluable work of Professor Salima Hashmi because it was the decades of hard labor and advocacy of Professor Hashmi that brought students from Afghanistan, Bhutan, Nepal, India, Sri Lanka, and Bangladesh together in Lahore, where they were trained in the heart of Asia in the wide range of techniques of art production and conceptualizations to investigate the traditional and the contemporary. And you will see how this manifests in the fantastic work of Marjan and Mariam. Ecological aesthetics, as I conceptualize it here, reflects on the interplay between human life and the spheres, water, land, air, and the biosphere. The visual archives of transformation that Marjan and Mariam have produced invite us to think from the urban envi environments in which most of us are living about different scales, including the city, towns, villages, the masses of land that connect cities and the worlds we create indoors. As archivists and thinkers in their own right, Marjan and Mariam's work thinks alongside that of, that of political theorists about political ecologies. Political ecology is an analytical frame to study relations between the social and the environment and human geography. It examines the implications of political economies, including of war, colonialism and imperialism on place, space and life. Instead of working with a homogenizing understanding of what it means to be human, Marjan and Mariam's work renders environmental transformation and transplantation visible. Through media, including amongst others painting and ceramics, both examine in their own distinct way the effective life of memories, the materiality of human-made borders, and human imprints in cities at the foot of mountains, on sight of roads, and on aging carpets. Both explore social, biological, and material transformation across geographies and thereby draw new maps that show our connectedness beyond classical political maps. Elements of their work draw diasporic maps and others they push for an in-depth discussion on the meaning of home in Iran, between Iran and Pakistan and beyond. The work of both artists inhabits the potentiality to think about socially produced difference, pollution, destruction, as well as memory construction and care. Their most recent work locates humans out of the frame and invites us to think about the possibility of ecological repair, of creating environments in which we can brief, reflect on how land is used and misused, and non-human life treated. Before Marjan and Mariam will present their work to us, and before we will delve into the discussion, allow me to introduce, without further ado, our fantastic panelists. Mariam, Mariam Bania Sadi is an Iranian visual artist born in 1993 and based in Lahore, Pakistan. She completed her Bachelor in Fine Arts in Miniature Painting and Masters in Visual Arts from the National and has a Masters in uh, Visual Arts from the National College of Arts in Lahore, Pakistan. She was selected for the first Dastangui Art Residency in Islamabad in 2021 and was granted scholarship for the Kunstlerstadt Kalbe summer campus residency in 2019 in Kalbe, Germany. She has shown her work in various cities in the world, including a solo show uh, entitled In the Realm of Metamorphosis at the Tarahan Azad Gallery in Tehran, and a two-person show entitled Dual Gen Genesis at the Chao Kandi Gallery in Karachi. Her work was part of contemporary miniatures from Iran at the Tier Art Fair in Tehran in 2019, as well as contemporary miniatures from Pakistan at the Reitberg Museum Zürich, Switzerland, and Canvas Gallery Karachi. She's currently working between Iran and Pakistan. Her twin sister, Marjan Bania Sadi, uh, is an Iranian visual artist based in Munich, Germany. She did her Bachelor of Fine Arts also at the National College of Arts in Lahore, and received a fully funded scholarship to study her master's in ceramic design from the University of Pex in Hungary. Currently, she is enrolled at the Academy of Fine Arts in Munich, Germany. In 2021, she received the scholarship Junge Kunst und Neue Wege from Bayern Innovativ in Germany. And in 2023, she was selected 
for international for an international stipend of the Künstlerhauses Oberpfälzer to do an artist residency at the Virginia Center for the Creative Arts in uh, the US. She recently had a solo exhibition at the Joe Fandelow Gallery in Munich and a group exhibition at the Museum Kurhaus Kleve in also in Germany and in 2003 she was part of the group show Festival of Birds one at Hinterland uh, at the Hinterland Gallery in Vienna, Austria, and the tiniest stir that's the title uh, of a group exhibition at the Chao Kandi Gallery in Pakistan. Professor Salima Hashmi is an artist, curator, and contemporary art historian, born in Delhi. She was fa uh, the founding member, the founding dean at the Mariam Dawood School of Visual Arts and Design at Beacon House National University, Lahore, in 2003 where she is now Professor Emeritus. She taught at the National College of Arts Lahore for three decades. She was also the principal of the college for four years and held the post of Professor of Fine Arts. She is a painter of repute whose works have been exhibited in Pakistan and in international exhibitions. She has written extensively on the arts and has curated exhibitions of contemporary art and traditional textile within Pakistan and internationally. Salima Hashmi was the co-founder of the Rohtas Gallery in Islamabad, established in 1981, and established Rohtas II in Lahore in 2001, which has focused on young artists and new art practices. Her book, entitled Unveiling the Visible Lives and Works of Women Artists of Pakistan, was published in 2002, as well as the book with the title Memories, Myths and Mutations, Contemporary Art of India and Pakistan, co-authored with Yashudara Dalmia, uh, and published with Oxford University Press in 2006. She has edited The Eye Still Seeks Contemporary Art of Pakistan for Penguin Books uh, India in 2014. And Nazar Ki Umang edited um, an Urdu translation of The Eye Still Seeks for Sangh Emil Pakistan in 2020. Salima Hashmi curated also um, Hanging Fire, an exhibition of Pakistani contemporary art for the Asia Society Museum in New York in 2009, which was accompanied by an extensive catalog. She curated the critically acclaimed exhibition entitled The Night Bitten Dawn, hosted by Gujral Foundation and the Devi Art Foundation in Delhi, which opened on the occasion of the Delhi Art Fair in 2016. The government of Pakistan awarded her the President's Medal for Pride of Performance for Art Education in 1999, and the Australian Council of Art and Design Schools nominated her as inaugural, inaugural International Fellow for Distinguished Service to Art and Design Education in 2011. She was awarded the ALMA Award by ALMA Culture Center Oslo in Norway for, promote, for the promotion of tolerance for performance in 2016. She was also awarded an honorary doctorate by the Bath Spa University in the UK in 2016. Professor Hashmi was made Professor Emeritus in the School of Visual Art and Design at Beacon House National University in 2017 and is, importantly, a council member of the Human Rights Commission of Pakistan. Professor Negom Motahadeh is a professor of literature at Duke University. Negor holds a PhD in Comparative Studies in Discourse and Society from the University of Minnesota and a BA in International Relations from Mount Holyoke College. Her research on film, social media and social movements in the Middle East has been published with Stanford University Press, Syracuse University Press and Duke University Press. This includes her monographs Whisper Tapes, Kate Millett in Iran, which was published with Stanford University Press in 2019, Displaced Allegories, Iranian Cinema, 1980-2000, to 2000, published with Duke University Press in 2008, and which was awarded with the Persian Heritage Foundation Book Award, as well as Iran, hashtag Iran Election, hashtag Solidarity and the Transformation of Online Life, which was honored with the Washington Post Middle East Book Award. Professor Negar has written for The Wired Magazine, The Hill, Saloon.com, The Observer, and The Wall Street Journal. Um, a really, really warm welcome to all of you. It's such a great pleasure to have you here today with us. And I would now hand over the mic to Mariam John to uh, begin the presentation. Thank you very much. Okay. okay. Uh, thank you, Panis, for the introduction. 
and uh, hello everyone and thank you for joining us today i will just start with the presentation Okay, uh, so I would like to start with my earlier series of painting, uh, which I did during my bachelor's in NC in 2015. Uh, so basically, I moved from Tehran to Pakistan, uh, to Lahore. And uh, uh, while I was studying in the miniature painting department, I was really inspired uh, by my surroundings and I was observing my uh, uh, life uh, and the changes I was going through. And uh, this actually uh, made me, inspired me to record my own journey into miniature paintings. Uh, much like, you know, how in uh, Mughal miniature, uh, the kings are actually uh, recording their own life into miniature paintings. Uh, so I was actually witnessing my own life uh, into these, uh, in, in miniatures, uh, in these miniatures. And uh, I'm also like present in the painting as well here. Um, so yeah, I start with this series and then I'll show the transformation in my work. Uh, basically I learned uh, miniature painting from both Iran and Pakistan. I was, uh, during my summer holidays, I would go to Iran and learn the Persian uh, miniature technique. And uh, uh, during my time in Pakistan, I was uh, doing the Mughal miniature and uh, I was actually learning the academic and the formal way of miniature in NCA. Uh, I was uh, always uh, inspired by the building and, you know, the NCA. Uh, it actually holds a lot of history. And uh, so NCA itself, uh, National College of Arts, uh, was actually Maya College of Art. And it was built by uh, in British era in 1875. And uh, the purpose of this college was actually to record the crafts from Punjab. So I'm just showing like how like uh, the purpose has changed. Uh, now it's a contemporary art college and uh, uh, it's uh, again, like it has a new purpose now. Uh, you know, like how in actually in miniature paintings, in the history of miniature paintings, uh, if you look at Shahnameh, uh, so Shahnameh from different eras have uh, different styles. Like uh, uh, if you see Shahnameh of uh, Safavid, like Shah Tahmas, uh, the style of miniature is different and it shows that time and it's completely different from uh, Shahnama of Ilkhanid uh, in the like, uh, 14th century so like you know for me also this miniature shows now it shows the contemporary uh yeah so i used uh, different elements in my work i used the architecture and the nature and figures and also their relationship with each other uh, and you know it's in one painting uh, they they're like seen as one, and you know you see the movement. Uh, it's like explorative, uh, and uh, I paid attention to every detail. Uh, you know, like uh, uh, miniature painting is actually a technique which uh, takes a lot of time. It's time taking uh, from like you know seeing the subject and then uh, sketching it, and uh, you know the idea of sketching and then the transferring to paper line work like uh, then you apply the paint then, then you uh, render it again so it's a very long process like i was uh, really you know uh, engaged with the process and i was always going back to my subject like this painting took me one month then so every day i was going back and you're seeing the main court courtyard this was the main courtyard of nca i was going back there and you know uh, observing again and uh, so you know this place for me like uh, it also had a sense of home because uh, so uh, like this college uh, on the entrance, the gate, which is on the uh, right side, uh, there was a Persian poetry also, uh, which is saying uh, this actually means that uh, gain knowledge to be known by, by the world. So this for me, like, you know, seeing that every day, like, you know, the Farsi, uh, it was very uh, heartwarming and, you know, uh, it felt like home. Uh, so here it's like a detail of the painting. So I paid attention in every detail, like even ordinary objects are there. Uh, you know, you see the Coke bottle here, like, you know, usually like uh, we would just leave it there. 
and uh, like the plate and then you know uh, this guy is taking a picture and you know he, he has his head, headphones hanging so I actually depicted everything like you see the modern elements also like you know the projector is there uh, so this is also another painting of NC building uh, which is from the rooftop view of it uh, so here, uh, you know, you see the uh, modern elements again, like, you know, the solar panel is here and uh, uh, also like, you know, at the same time, uh, you see the okay, the students down and, you know, some are sitting on the roof, some are actually next to the gate. And, you know, you see the gate of NCA as well and the, the outer area of uh, uh, the NCA because NCA is actually in the heart of Lahore and, you know, there there is a lot of like, Holds a lot of history. That area, uh, it has a lot of uh, old buildings like uh, Punjab University and the Lahore uh, Museum, which was built during uh, British era. So here, like you see the gates, and uh, you also see the barbed wires on the gates. So you know, like how uh, actually, like uh, I started in 2012. So this barbed wire wasn't there, and you know. Uh, it was uh, installed later the next year. It also shows the security situ situation at that time. Uh, so like, uh, you know, uh, the fences were covered. Nobody could see through it. Like uh, if you ask somebody who graduated 20 years ago, it was never like this, it, it was open. Like uh, anyone could see outside. Uh, yeah, so this is another painting. Uh, Again, you know, when I came to Pakistan, like the security situation in uh, Pakistan and you know, seeing the blocks, you know, uh, blocking the way, barbed wires and, you know, the policeman, gunmen are standing. So, uh, like, that was something which I was seeing daily. And, uh, you know, in the beginning, I was scared, but uh, eventually it was actually part of my life. Like, it was just normal to see, like, these uh, securities. And... Uh, no, however, like uh, the normal life in this painting, the normal life is actually going on. It's actually showing uh, two spaces, the outdoor space and indoor. So, uh, you know, the ones outside, they don't know what's happening inside. So it's also that unfamiliar feeling, but uh, actually the really calm life is going on. Yeah, this is a cricket match. So it's actually a very popular sport in Pakistan. And uh, so again, you know, when cricket happens in Pakistan, the work stops, like, you know, the roads are blocked. Uh, you can't go anywhere basically because of the security, like there's a lot of security everywhere. And uh, so, uh, and that also is normal, like, you know, it's the cricket day, so I'll just stay home. So, but you know, again, like, you know, the calm, activities are going on. So uh, I wanted to show a painting from an interior space I did. And uh, so this is actually, it's called the Kavali Night. So Kavali is uh, Pakistan's folk music. And uh, it's usually, it has a lot of uh, spiritual meanings. Uh, the lyrics is very spiritual and so these are the travels, the musicians sitting in the front and uh, the viewers are sitting in the opposite them. So, you know, when the Kavali happens, uh, Kavali is like a gofdugu. It's like a conversation the Kavals are having with the pe pe viewers sitting there. So they're sharing that spiritual moment together. Uh, and, uh, uh, but, you know, again, like, you know, I uh, painted that, but I painted the little guy here like you know is it like setting the speakers so you know the normal life the background is also uh, in my work this is a detail of the painting uh so yeah here like so you know you uh, the cabals are actually sitting in uh this is a cindy rally uh, tapestry so they're sitting on uh, that uh it's actually it's like a carpet used, used as a carpet you know, like carpets also in our culture in Pakistan, it's a very sacred thing. So, you know, uh, they're sitting there and it's also marking a border. Uh, and uh, yeah, 
and also you know the hand gesture gesture of the vocalist and uh, so it shows the uh, moment there So uh, yeah, this is a painting I did during pandemic. Mm. So basically, I was in Tehran. I was uh, stuck in my room for uh, three months. So uh, you know, pandemic was something which everyone experienced, and uh, everyone experienced it at the same time, but in different uh, ways. Uh, but uh, I mean, the, it was for everyone. So well, it's actually uh, you know, in my other paintings, I was uh, I made a lot of figures, different people, but here it's uh, just me in my room doing different things. So here, like, uh, you know, the sense of time is actually gone. Like, you know, uh, you don't know, like, uh, uh, when is it? Like, it's actually showing the whole three months, maybe. And uh, again, you look, so also, like, this carpet was in my room then. Uh, I grew up on this carpet. So, like, everything is happening around that. Uh, and... Uh, you know, like for me, like I couldn't go out, I couldn't go to the nature. So this carpet also represented the nature for me. Like uh, I was just, you know, enjoying my time on that. Yeah, so moving on, uh, I'd like to start with my another series of work, uh, which is called Shapes of Thought. So uh, this series actually... Uh, uh, so uh, the shapes of thought is uh, actually means how like uh, uh, human uh, thought shapes the world. So it's talking about the relationship between nature and uh, man-made objects, and you know how a uh, human is trying to shape nature, and we are trying to uh, change nature. Uh, so uh, the shapes of thought is actually uh, the thought for me means tafakkur, tafakkur. In Farsi, it means uh, think, to think. So think is uh, something which is quick. Like, you know, you think and you take an action. So, uh, I mean, again, like, you know, I'm just talking about that relationship, how, like, human thought can actually change the world. And uh, uh, also that thought, again, is also me. Like, me, me as an artist bringing another change, like, you know, depicting these uh, subjects from nature. And... Uh, yeah, so in this work, actually, uh, so uh, I use the element uh, of nature and the uh, man-made uh, objects, but uh, the figurative element is gone, but uh, the traces of uh, human is there. And uh, so I... Mm, yeah, so I use a lot of uh, cypress trees in my work. So basically, cypress tree is a very symbolic tree. Uh, in Iran especially, uh, it represents uh, freedom, it's an evergreen tree, and uh, it doesn't bear a fruit also, and it's always standing strong. And, uh, you know, the qualities of uh, cypress tree is often uh, attributed to human, like, uh, actually human who gain their freedom. So for me, like, you know, I'm, these single trees also represent a human, like, uh, you know how we have been also shaped like to be a certain way and you know uh, to act a certain way also uh, actually so this tree like again you know i was observing my surrounding this tree i saw it in uh, kashan when i was traveling and it was inside a traditional house uh, so i liked it how like it was just placed there like uh, there was no other tree just this one So, yeah, this is called Trees in a Line. So this uh, tree is actually when I was tra traveling from Tehran to Hamadan, I saw these cypress trees all standing all together uh, and, you know, like in a barren uh, road because, you know, Iran is very dry. But uh, you see, like, people plant a lot of cypress trees because it's also like, you know, it goes with the environment. It doesn't need a lot of water. So you know how they are made to stand together and... Uh, be the same, but you know, they are not the same, uh, they're different. So, each tree. This is also from the same uh, when I was traveling, like, uh, you know, uh, to Hamadan. So, I really like the mountains and, uh, you know, the stillness. Uh, I, I was on the move, but uh, 
the trees were still like it's it was as if they're not just moving like just the mountain was moving so yeah so i did a lot of uh, series of single trees uh, which again like you know these trees for me they all uh, uh, they all have personalities they have identities so they're like a person person for me so like this is a palm tree which has been shaped and you know has been cut in a certain way by human obviously so yeah like again the same thing uh, uh, this is also the single trees which like you know in winters they just cut these trees like it's just a stick uh, and then you know they grow so they do it like that and uh, I saw this in Tehran this is uh, actually one of my earliest work which I saw in uh, one of the parks in Lahore how like this tree was shaped in a straight line like a bad haircut maybe uh, but again like how it's shaped Yeah, this is another tree. Yeah, so um, moving on this, uh, so this is a painting of a sunflower, it's called a sunflower. And so this tree is actually like, when I painted it, so the size of this painting is actually not eight feet, which is like around two, two meters. Uh, so actually when I was traveling in Germany for my residency, in uh, Kalbe, uh, so Kalbe is a city uh, which is in East Germany, and uh, it's interesting that the locals there also they still call uh, the city East Germany. <laughs> so uh, I was doing my residency there, and uh, so there were a lot of abandoned buildings there, and uh, you know you could see that nature is growing uh, on the buildings, and uh, so then I saw this uh, sunflower. Uh, which was huge like I had never seen uh, such a big sunflower in my life and it was really overpowering like as if it was looking at me and uh, so I could feel the power of it also so I uh, painted I came back I took my picture and I uh, painted the sunflower it actually made me feel really small so this is the detail of the work so I like the technique of mini miniature because I mean it's really time taking, but it just I like to like keep thinking and you know it's it gives me a better relation with my work. Uh, so this is also another tree. It's like it's called a golchin or champa tree. It's a very famous, popular tree in Pakistan. Uh, so uh, so for me, like this painting is a uh, used. You see, like the flowers here, so it shows the you know the rebirths uh, and the how like you know they're all going back to the nature, going back to the tree. So I painted this uh, tree. This is the detail. I hope I'm not over time. <laughs> I'm just yeah. So this is also this painting. It's called Panthers in a Square. So again, like, you know, the same man-made border uh, and, you know, the trees have been planted here together. So, you know, palm tree is actually, it's never planted. Uh, it's uh, always pr uh, transplanted from somewhere to like, uh, uh, somewhere like here. So, uh, and, you know, you don't even know if they survived the trees, but, you know, you do, they just planted. So actually, like where I took this painting, I went back and the trees didn't survive. So like, you know, we just do the changes we want, but you don't know like what ha what's happening. Yeah, this is the details. Okay, yeah, this is another painting. Uh, sorry, okay. So I'll just quickly uh, explain this. Uh, this is another painting. I saw it uh, when I was traveling uh, in uh, outside Lahore. So it's a plant which is protected by the bricks. Uh, so they usually make these bricks around the uh, new plants to protect them from uh, you know animals uh, being eaten, like to get eaten from animals. And uh, uh, so the, this, like the purpose is actually uh, 
uh, protecting the plant and uh, how uh, I was I'm also very inspired by the color also you know here Lahore is very orange like the brick red bricks and plants so I painted this uh, so this is a painting of like the urban space you know with all the elements this is another example and yes so I would like to finish my presentation with this work. So yeah, for me, this work is called the, the tree of life. Uh, it's actually a tree which has different leaves and you know, different branches. Uh, so uh, I came up with this idea, like, uh, you know, how like the, I was talking about the changes human is doing to nature. So I was thinking of like, what if he, uh, nature creates a tree which has like different leaves and uh, it's actually a mystic tree, imaginary tree of nature. Uh, so uh, yeah, for me, it shows the diversity and also like, you know, how like the essence of life, like uh, it's all coming from one source. It's actually one trunk and, you know, different leaves uh, and uh, it's the relationship between the tree and the human thought also. And uh, yeah, so yeah, it's actually this tree is real, real and imagina imagination for me. Uh, so I, I mean, uh, I do reference from and uh, see a lot of miniatures. So in miniature painting, there is a walk, walk tree, uh, which is actually a tree which uh, uh, it's a one, one trunk and uh, uh, and uh, it has a. It's actually the tree. Uh, I'll just show you. I have it in my. The tree like bears fruit, and uh, the fruits are actually human head. So, and uh, this also the uh, this tree has different symbols, and uh, it's actually uh, people in some uh, communities believe a man was born from this tree. So uh, I think we don't have time. We can elaborate more on this in Q and A. Thank you. Thank you everyone for listening. So, um, hello everyone. I'm just going to start directly. Um, also manage the time better. And thank you everyone uh, for joining us today. And so I'm just going to start. So I'm also starting with my uh, actually thesis work uh, at uh, NCA National College of Arts. Actually, yeah, uh, from uh, 2012 uh, when we moved to Lahore. Uh, I was always looking at at the references that um, can remind me of home. So actually inside our home, there was a lot of carpets. So that carpet um, in a way moved uh, with us to uh, to the different region that uh, we lived in. Uh, so and to uh, as an Iranian, um, actually every Iranian carpet is a very uh, significant uh, object that exists at home. And it uh, travels with you. It's like one of the most important furniture that uh, has to be there. And uh, as important as anything as the fridge or <laughs> stove. So it must, it's a must. And uh, most of us uh, growing on, have grown on carpet, started crawling, playing in the carpet, uh, inside the carpet with the flowers and everything. So this actually was... Um, uh, feel, um, a really good feeling for me, uh, feel, feeling of warmth uh, to uh, express my idea through the idea of carpet, because uh, carpets are, are not just an object which, which, uh, which are laying there. Uh, they're actually listening to your stories. They grow old with you. They, listen, uh, they uh, make a meeting, uh, um, a gathering happen within them. So uh, actually, this work uh, is uh, oil, oil on canvas, and um, I was um, taking the reference uh, from the time that I was uh, visiting Iran during the summers. I was usually uh, going to Iran, and I was uh, in the bazaar of Tehran and um, looking at references. 
And I saw these uh, torn carpets, uh, which were actually, uh, they were throwing them, them out uh, in the garbage. Uh, so I was just asking what is happening here because it was a quite shocking image that what is going on here. And they told me they actually took take these um, old carpets and uh, which are like defected or something. And they, um, they cut uh, the uh, surroundings and they, do this over dyed technique over them and um, they make it uh, as this uh, modern carpets which are very um, uh, for the foreign tourists it's very interesting and it's in trend so in a way that was really uh, quite shocking to hear but still uh, i asked them can i collect these uh, pieces and by um, looking at them then i was seeing they are suffering but they they actually still look so beautiful and we can hear them, like listen to them. Uh, and then also looking at different uh, references of carpet, also backside of the carpet, the wrap of the carpet where the carpet has, uh, starts to be woven on it. It's like starting a life, a journey, a story to tell that weaving process. So I was um, also making a um, uh, self-portrait uh, this uh, uh, work is called and actually there is an image of myself there and then I started building up uh, layers on top of it it's actually like our time uh, memories also gets re replaced and um, things move on and become hazy um, and also in this work, green, I was also, carpet is also initially, um, it's imagery of nature, uh, garden paradise. So I was looking at the references around me and uh, nature around me, figures around me. So actually this painting I go here, it's actually the process, the first layer is actually my father sitting in a garden. I was uh, taking a photo of this moment, which was really nice for me. And then I started painting in it and adding those layers. Actually, this, these lines that you see are like one by one build up, uh, like just um, making this story uh, like um, fixed and uh, memorable. And then again, adding those hazy layers. So like our memory, and I didn't create any focal point just to just view this painting, spend time with it. And yeah, this is actually a picture from National College of Arts, my studio. I didn't have an easel, yeah. And here also, this is a, so I take references also from the carpets that um, I had or my family had. Uh, so this was also one of them. I was painting this carpet and then, um, then just covering it and bringing uh, elements of uh, uh, carpet fragments on top of it uh, that's just like the memory uh, and it then uh, I heard from people that oh it looks like a map so for me it was really interesting without intention of making a map but it was looking like a map actually um, also like a carpet which is imagery of a garden paradise uh, imagery of a hole and so and then uh, this was actually one of my first installation. Uh, it was part of a show transition of tra tradition in 2018 in Tasir Art Gallery, uh, Lahore, Pakistan. And uh, it was a two person show uh, with a, a Pakistani artist, Anushka Rostamji. Uh, she's uh, actually an uh, artist from Karachi belonging to the Parsis community. Parsis are the Persians, Zoroastrians, which have uh, migrated to the subcontinent. Uh, uh, many centuries back uh, and um, so it was really interesting that we shared a story but uh, not uh, directly uh, and uh, we actually uh, the title of this work is ready-made runes uh, so we we were actually taking elements from the monuments of uh, uh, Persian architecture and uh, Mesopotamia and uh, where uh, these um, monuments were actually moved from its origins. Uh, so we took these elements and it's actually comment on that uh, process. Uh, so these elements uh, we took from the architecture and we made it with the chalk powder and uh, these uh, trays uh, that um, the Restorian Parsis use uh, as a celebrative uh, material 
for for celebration also during Noru's. So we use that and also the carpet as the storyteller of these uh, these mo monuments, these uh, stories. Um, and um, it's actually like also Ishtar Gate, how it was moved to uh, Germany. Uh, like if it came from fragments uh, to Berlin. And so we are actually commenting on that. And so uh, when we made this for, we also allowed the uh, viewers to just walk over it and just to spend time with it. So it was actually interesting to see uh, how it looked afterwards, just fragments of it uh, was left. And then uh, here, uh, I actually uh, moving, uh, I'm moving to my uh, journey of ceramic. I started uh, studying master's in ceramic design in University of Pitch in Hungary. And um, so uh, after six years, I moved to uh, Europe. Uh, for me, it was quite of a big change. Actually, my relationship with my uh, sister also, we were always working together during that six years, uh, uh, sharing a studio, and it was a really good time. And I think our work looked different when we were working together. Um, and when I moved to uh, Europe, I was actually, the imagery of carpet was not there anymore. I was also alone. Uh, so... I was in a smaller uh, uh, place. I didn't have a studio. I had to just use the university. So I was just looking at references of my surrounding, of the nature, again, uh, making and using the porcelain surface as my canvas. So I was still continuing the painting, the concept, but uh, on a different uh, medium. And, you know, the in comparison, ceramic and carpets, they both actually mm, convey history, but in a different way, uh, like ceramic has aged way more carpet or textile is just, you know, around the age of a human. But uh, in the other way, ceramics are really fragile and uh, they, they just like break the fear of them breaking is much stronger. And then again, using those porcelains and as my canvas and not looking at carpets anymore, looking at nature, my surrounding, my feelings around, uh, around me. And also then I was thinking of uh, uh, the materiality of uh, porcelain, which was uh, really interesting that I could make those waves, but of course it's not soft and then uh, making a part of a carpet and like listen to this carpet just by viewing it and um, listening to it. And it's actually, when you hold them, it's scary because you're always afraid that they break. But if it's stable on a, a pedestal, you're just like to observe it, to listen to it. It's uh, And uh, I have also uh, more of the series in different uh, mediums and stones. Um, this is called the Iranian carpet. And also I was uh, thinking of uh, this quality of ceramic of tiles and also carpet. So I was a bit of mixing it and the uh, pattern is also just inspired from my uh, surrounding, uh, like the nature, the feeling. It was actually spring in Hungary when I was making this work. So you start to see the flowers, the surrounding. Um, and mixing those elements like a tile like um, and uh, carpet like. So and uh, moving back to painting, actually, I'm showing my paintings uh, according to the year I made. Uh, so I was always moving back uh, to different mediums. And uh, this painting I actually did during my last visit to Iran in 2021. Um, and I was actually, um, this was a, a carpet that has been laying uh, in, uh, in our house in Tehran under our uh, dining table. And like I literally grew on this carpet. It was like dowry of my mother. and But I never looked at it in, in such a detail. I was just, okay, it's a carpet. Because as a child, you know, you just see, okay, these red carpets uh, everywhere. Uh, you're just sick of them in a way. Okay, you see it. But then I started actually looking at it uh, by such a joy, uh, sitting beside it, um, hearing my parents talking and just uh, sketching it. So I think if I had made this work in 
any other place, it wouldn't look uh, the same. It's just the environment around, around me really affected uh, how this work looks now. And also the border of this carpet. So I was viewing it in a detail, this uh, uh, elements of this carpet. And then again, yeah, this work, I was making it in Iran. So my works actually traveled, they traveled with me a lot, actually some of them four or five times. So this one actually, I did it in Tehran and then was uh, displayed in uh, Karachi and then came to Germany in my uh, last uh, solo show uh, was displayed. Also, this again is one of the works that I did it during a residency in Poland. And then I took it to Iran, then it, uh, I did parts of it there and then again to Germany and to Munich. So it really traveled a lot. Also carrying those feelings, also the changes, the colors and the patterns. So uh, this is a part of a work that I did for, uh, for a group um, exhibition um, uh, in Museum Koros Kleve, uh, Germany. And uh, this work is actually uh, about, uh, ex more also site specific. So we visited the museum, we looked at the archives and we were also told that, yeah, you can see how, how the space inspired you. And for me, um, I saw these figurines uh, of uh, Amlosh and Loristan. Uh, they are dated back to uh, 1000 uh, BC uh, in uh, in the archives. Um, Loristan is in the uh, west side of Iran and uh, Amlosh is in Gilan today, uh, which is in the north. And uh, I was seeing these figurines there and I was really... Uh, uh surprise like uh, first time like looking at the archive you can also get closer and seeing it uh, and i was suddenly feeling uh, really shocked oh how they actually moved from their origin they're displaced uh, they are not where they belong to like where where they come from so it was really touching for me to then I thought to make these figurines with uh, uh, with ceramic uh, porcelain uh, or a stoneware, and also the original is all in between uh, this installation. That's a better view. So actually, when these figurines were uh, discovered uh, during the 10th, uh, 20th uh, century, they were massively distributed and like sold to the uh, taken to the museums of the West uh, and also to the private collections. So when the scholars came to uh, research more, so many information was missing because they were like massively just distributed. So then uh, again, with that idea and concept, I made uh, this carpet. Uh, I actually commissioned it. Uh, it was made in Pakistan. So I, um, I was um, taking these references of uh, um, the elements uh, and uh, making a, it's actually around one feet uh, the carpet the woven part so it's it's kind of telling a story that it's incomplete you don't know about it you you can't know more and it's just a part of it a little part of it is woven i hope we're doing good time wise and yeah this is uh, the detail and so here, um, actually, we are at the last two slides, and this is actually part of my last uh, group show in, uh, in Vienna, Festival of Birds, in the Hinterland Gallery, uh, and uh, we were actually uh, this was uh, the show was around the book conference of bird by Atar Nesha Puri, very famous Iranian poet of 12th century, and it's a uh, uh, it's a group of birds which are uh, they're um, led by Hupi, Hot Hot, and they are looking for the true king, true leader. And in this um, this gathering, they are always discussing uh, their uh, weakness, and in a way, they are representing actually human uh, characteristics. So uh, one is like so attached to the worldly, like Bol Bol is so attached to the flower that cannot see go uh, through that and doesn't want to join. So in this work, I was making this story on this fabric, which I actually got from Tehran, uh, Bazaar of Tehran. And I also didn't know what is the purpose of this fabric because it looked really strange. And they told me they make curtains out of it. 
And then uh, I started uh, doing this em embroidery. Actually, it's a technique of embroidery specific to uh, Kerman region of uh, uh, of Iran. Uh, my mom comes from that region. It's called Pate. And she, she's been doing it uh, since I remember. Uh, even till now, uh, she's always like doing it and uh, talking. We are having tea together. So it, it's something that I saw so much uh, for me. It has a lot of lot to tell. And yeah, so we will come to the last uh, slide. Uh, this is my last paint, uh, painting, uh, like record last recorded actually uh, um i was doing this during my stay in uh, Vir vcca uh, virginia and um, this was my first time also going to the us and so uh, there i was actually it was a really strange feeling you know the time difference i had like around i don't know 9 10 hours difference with maria and my family connecting so it was really um, it was strange feeling for me so i was then looking a lot at my references that i took from iran in a way i was really like missing iran the most actually so i was um, looking at my last trip uh, where i was also going to the uh, to kermansha kurdish area of uh, iran and i was seeing um, these mountains uh, which i really was amazed because i was also always seeing maria making mountains in miniature and they always looked really stylized but when I saw them in real life, they, they were actually looking the same. So I was really happy to see something that I was seeing in references. So I took those references and then I was looking at them while I was in Virginia. And then by just crossing those pictures, I was making an imagination and, and just of how I felt a feeling of that moment in this uh, painting. Yeah, thank you very much for listening. And yeah, we are... Thank you so much, Marjon and Mariam, for these fantastic presentations. Um, I, I think uh, everyone is applauding right now, and although you might not hear it, you should know. <laughs> um, a thousand thanks. Um, I would open the conversation now um, and hand, I'll start with the first question and then hand over also the microphone to uh, Pr Professor uh, Salima Hashmi and Professor Negor, Negor Motahede. Um, Sal uh, Professor Hashmi and Professor Motahede, in what ways does the artwork of Marjan and Mariam invite us to think about social, political, and biological life and uh, transformation? Um, well, should I go first? <laughs> um, well, I think first a general remark that um, in today's world, which is full of dislocations, as we speak, um, one assumes that the artist of today would be a global citizen almost, because they travel, they see one another's work, whether virtually or actually. But in fact, you find that there is something else at play. And that is a desire for stabilization and to, to make sense of their world um, because of this exceedingly large canvas, if I can use that word, for what is happening in other parts of the world, there is interestingly just the opposite happening in lives, that countries are instead of expanding, they're kind of shrinking into themselves. The borders are becoming stronger the desire to um, define people who are not like yourself as the other. I think that is, that, that is a, to a certain extent, one of the unsaid factors which are influencing young artists. So when I looked at the work of these two young artists who happen to be twins, um, I feel that there is this desire to somehow first devise and to explain a very definite location. The location that comes out of tradition, something that makes you feel secure in yourself and your identity before you can let the rest of the world in. And therefore, um, it does invite us to think about all of those social and political factors 
that are affecting artists today in which they find that while they may have a sense of who they are, they have to reiterate it so that the rest of the world understands who they are. It is no longer um, left to just that inner person, but the outer person. So the work starts reflecting their conversation with roots, with tradition, with identities, with places, and those for a while become, I think, the most important factors um, in their practices. And um, both Marjan and Mariam are no different in that desire to first locate themselves in their immediate understanding of who they are. So to me, you know, as they unfolded their practices, I could see the fact that, okay, it first has to do with somehow connecting to something deeper, older, more ancient, so that they could then go forward and step into the contemporary world. I mean, this is, this is just a general remark about what one senses as, as a thread that runs through their practice. I don't know how you feel, Nigar, but um, this, is, this is the feeling. I mean, this is the primary feeling that I got from looking at their practice. I mean, going into details later, um, but this is the first um, overview, if you like. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I agree. I think this, uh, it was a really fantastic, fantastic presentation of the artwork by both of you. And I'm so inspired, I have to say. Um, and I, I do agree that, um, uh, in, in the work of, of both of you, there is a sense that, um, uh, you have a very clear sense of, of the, migratory nature uh, um, uh, of, of, of the life that is given birth to these pieces. Like what is, what is a Persian artist doing, um, painting herself in a miniature in a kurta, for example, right? What, what, what how, how do, how are we to understand that? Um, um, uh, the, there is like there is um i think in 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 a, a world that is um more and more informed by our um existence in a in in the media environment of the digital there is such uh tactility um in the works um so much um um uh, like an acknowledgement of the withering away of uh, of of um, the world, um, you know, our natural environment. Um, uh, be it uh, be it be it the trees uh, that you know, um, uh, or or the carpets that represent the gardens that that. Um, that were that are depicted on them so there is this there is this sense in which um uh there there is a really tactile sense in this work that also acknowledges the fragmentor fragmented um and and tactile quality of existence that we all have only part of the story, no matter where we go, no matter how uh, how far we travel. There is, we all have only parts of the story, and I think this is really summed up in 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 um, my John's uh, last um, piece on on the conference of the birds. I mean, essentially, the the birds in the very end you know, come together to discover that that hod hod that they were looking for, that the Seymour is us, is the 30 birds who actually made it through the journey. Um, so there's this, it's, there is like a deeply, um, yes, there's a deep in, embeddedness in, um, uh, in tradition, 
but also a reinterpretation of those traditions from a place of wisdom, from the wisdom of having traveled the world, having experienced the, um, the impact of, of capital and imperialism and, and colonialism and um, the extraction of, 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 of the earth and uh, the, the, deter the deterioration of the natural environment and the top soil and um, the, the spectacle of our own self-destruction as, as human beings, it's all here in these pieces and it, it and and the wisdom that that is conveyed um, through this work is in the tactility of it and in the fragmentary nature uh, of the pieces. Um, uh, and this is what I really love about the pieces actually. And um, I, I don't know if it's okay, Panis, but I, I just, I, I, I wanted um, Mariam to go back uh, to the very last bit that she left off on the tree of life. Um, it's such a wonderful piece. And it, it reminds me really of um, um, this work that, uh, this work of grafting that we do. I mean, a lot of the apples that we get here on, you know, in the US and on Turtle Island uh, are, are apples that have been, um, th that we eat from trees that have been grafted over and over again from, from um, um, yeah, from trees that um, grew in the steppes in, in Central Asia. And um, so there's this, you know, this tree of life is actually a tree that has all of these different leaves and has all of these elements. It's actually um, a tree of a hundred fruits. And I just, I just love that idea. Like what, yeah, talk a little bit about that, I, Mariam, if you don't mind. Yeah, I also couldn't talk enough about this. Uh, yeah, so, you know, for me, uh, uh, also, like I uh, depicted different trees uh, in my work, like uh, as I showed earlier, uh, like single trees. So then, um, after painting them, then I thought, you know, uh, what if like they were all one? Again, you know, the fruits you're saying, like the same thing, like uh, uh, if like nature itself creates a tree which. Uh, has different leaves, but uh, it's uh, actually one, like, you know, the, the trunk is one and, you know, the, uh, it also shows like the oneness, like, uh, uh, like uh, how we are all the same and also the diversity. Uh, so again, like, you know, the relationship between the tree and the human life. Uh, uh, so, yeah, I think we got to the point. Uh, and you know, like, uh, uh, I mean, I was also, in, you know, miniature painting itself, uh, it's actually your hand is really open and uh, you can just express your idea. So for me, like, looking at old miniatures, like, uh, you know, how like the, the walk tree, like, you know, it's a mystic tree, it doesn't exist, but uh, there are like plenty of this tree painted. So uh, I felt really easy just to paint and, you know, create this tree myself. And uh, yeah, so <laughs> if you have any questions, I can uh, answer about the tree. I think if I can make a remark over here, I think it's interesting yeah. that both the artists have, um, have gone in very divergent ways. And, you know, as um, Marjan said, that they were so used to working together for a long time that when she left and went into a very different uh, location, but um, in which she sort of had to almost, to me, it seemed, had to reinvent her practice because it was very different to the kind of close collaborative work that they were doing earlier. And um, I especially, uh, I'm glad you noted uh, that, you know, there's this, this um, the arrival of the carpet in both the artists' works saying totally different things. Because uh, with, with Mariam, you find that the, 
the carpet is really marking territory and it is deciding okay who sits where and what the the, the space that the carpet is actually marking out that is a space in the picture frame and it says certain things just by the fact that okay, certain people are functioning within that space and with Marjan, she's kind of liberated the carpet. Like it's firstly, it's gone into a totally different material. I think what I find in both the artists' works, and I feel I have to comment here, that uh, Mariam has not ventured far from the medium and the techniques that she felt comfortable with. And she has gone on to make images in which case, when she's commenting on the tree, the human body has disappeared. And the tree now becomes a symbol and a presence, which suggests all of the problems that humans face, you know, whether it's being curbed, whether it's being put into an urban environment and having to be constrained, all of the things that she has noticed, which apply to human society as well. While with Marjan, she has gone, once that she was separated from her close companion, who was a companion in work, she then had to, or was interested in experimenting with a totally different form. And from that very, very highly um, traditional, delicate way of working on one surface, which is the Vasli, which is the surface of the miniature, she then goes into something which is totally different, which is a third dimension. And I really like the transition that he, she is making from the painting um, done earlier, and you know, and the carpets and so on, and then seeing how it behaves, the same idea behaves in ceramics and in porcelain. And of course, the medium asserts itself and says, OK, I'll do so and so, but I'm not going to do so and so. And that, to me, is the most exciting moment um, in her practice, because you suddenly find that, OK, the carpet reappears. But you know, it's, it's got a completely different feeling. It's no longer marking territory. It is no longer saying the things that were there earlier in the fragments. Um, and yet they are fragments that she's working in ceramics also. But they, in a way, each, each piece is complete. While with the earlier story of that, those wonderful dying carpets that had lived a life and then were hinting at that life when you took them and saved them and brought them and then contemplated them. So, and, and then they appear in ceramic and porcelain and so on. And I think that's, that's it's a marvelous example of transformation that occurs. And the artist decides what that transformation is going to be. To me, you know, that's, that's a quite a remarkable thing that you, that you did over there. Because it's not just a transformation of um, an image or a pattern into another material but it's also a transformation of sensibility. It speaks of the fact that you are now in the West. You're in a very different place. And I think in a very subtle and quiet way, you are expressing that um, change in location, which is not something that you are a stranger to. You've done it many times in your life, but because it becomes part of your work, in a very solid, you know, and it actually is solid because it's no longer, you know, on paper. Um, it's a material. I think that was for me um, quite an amazing step that you've taken because it was a risky step and it was a very brave step that you did. You know, you had a totally different experience. Oil on canvas, you know, gouache on wesley. Those are very different behaviors of materials. And here you're going into a very different kind of a behavior. And the fact there is third dimension also. I enjoy the fact that you found those, um, you know, the small figurines, which are thousands of years old, 
because of course in Pakistan you have the Indus Valley civilization in which you have almost the exact kind of figures you know in in animals and, uh, so there's this continuity of civilizations that are in these animal forms um, I, I thought that they were they were very lovely because they were fragile and yet so ancient I mean that tells you something about the perseverance of life uh, the hands that made those um, the human beings are not there but you know the result of their work is there so it, that, that's quite touching and you, you yourself use that word actually um, which which I found you know yes they are very touching because they tell you how certain things can persevere through history and and just be there to remind us that there were so many thousands uh, people who came before us thousands of years ago they had you know similar loves and similar fascinations um, and then you go back to recreating them in textile so you're back again in another uh, medium and material and that that is extremely exciting because they become something else totally something else and there's a kind of sense of humor in the way that you have um, brought them back into textile like you know you're sort of uh, exploring the fact that they can look fragile and humorous at the same time. Um, and of course, the, the, the fact that you looked again at the carpet that was in your dining room for a very long time, that speaks of how all of us um, who, you know, who um, do ignore things that are there and are desperate to tell their stories. And it's then an artist who comes back and takes another look and is willing not just to examine and to investigate, but also is willing to confess that they had not looked at something so important, such a vital part of their social life and their domestic life, and now are willing to share it with a wider audience so then we become participants um, in that uh, experience that the artist brings to us. I think that's a, that's a terribly important um, lesson that the audience learns from something that you have done, which is very personal. I have to say that one sense that I get out of both of your practices is there's a great sense of intimacy that your work embodies. And it's that sharing of that intimacy, which takes us, uh, leads us into both your origins and the fact that you are now global citizens, because you're willing to um, scale down the things that you're doing. And that makes you know, the, our relationship of our body with your work absolutely possible. So me just, for me, that is um, an extremely exciting aspect of your work. I mean, sometimes artists are the last people who know what they're doing. And so it takes a total outsider to say, oh, I saw that. I mean, that's happened to me many times as a practicing artist. Sometime a five-year-old has looked at my work and, and told me what it's about. And I suddenly realized that they're right. And it was, a, I didn't know what I was doing, but they saw it right away. So, you know, that, that's the exciting thing of, of being an artist, that it's a give and take. Uh, with your audience, which um, which becomes a sharing, you know, with others. I actually wanted to ask you a question, uh, Professor uh, Ajime, about um, the the uh, intimate nature of the political commentary uh, in, in this work as well, and and how different it is from, um, or how similar, or how different it is from the social and political. Uh, commentary um, um, in, in the work that um, you saw when you were in university and when in in the early days of of your work as as a as a teacher and and uh, you know of art um, I mean just as one example I'm, I'm just thinking about the the cypress tree as the symbol of freedom in Mariam's work and um, and how the cypresses um, um, exhibit their difference and also their similarity in, in a collective setting. 
it's a very different type of of uh, sense of political commentary and, uh, and you know um seeing a cypress tree you know um inhibited by by cement and you know uh, in in probably not very great soil right um than 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 um say a, a a poster that is you know cries freedom you know uh freedom for palestine or whatever on on and on the streets of new york so i'm just like wondering like um what your sense of uh, is of, of in about the political commentary here and how it's different from what you you saw in the 60s 70s and um maybe early 90s <laughs> Well, I, I think that artists um, are especially well placed. I mean, not just artists. Poets are very pl well placed. Writers are very. Songwriters are very well placed to be like the litmus um, for their time. And um, it's been a good fortune or ill fortune um, that you know someone of my age has lived through uh, great political turmoil. You know, I was just four years old when the subcontinent was partitioned and there was huge, you know, bloodletting, but also movement of populations and so on. But when I started teaching and um, very soon, I mean, after a brief honeymoon period in the political scenario in Pakistan, you know, we had a military dictatorship and we had to negotiate how we were going to talk about what we wanted to talk about. Easier said than done, because you learn as you go along as to what kind of materials you use, what kinds of imagery you can use, um, how do you, without you know getting caught out, uh, how do you converse with your audience? So you devise certain markers and, and certain images, certain ways of using material. I used a lot of collage, for example, so I used actually uh, cuttings from newspapers or posters and sort of hid them in layers of paint. And so the, the viewer had to almost decode what was there or connect it to certain things that they had experienced. My special interest was um, the vulnerability of women during those years. So I used uh, the female um, as, as a kind of cipher, if you like, but having to be very careful about how I negotiated the image uh, of the female. Um, sometimes I couldn't exhibit my work in, in a place where uh, it could possibly land me into severe trouble. But on the other hand, I had scaled down my work. So if there was a problem, I could just put it under my arm and disappear with my whole exhibition if I wanted to. Um, so these are things that, that artists learn to do. I think I tried very hard that with my class, because I was a teacher, making them aware of the fact that they couldn't live in silos, that they were part of a social and political fabric and they were responsible or, or they ought to be. So while they were investigating themselves, which is of course what an artist first does, they explore their own ideas and test them out as to how to relate that uh, to what was going on around. And just sharing, um, talking, and then artists, uh, young artists, as you know, Mariam and Marja know, at NCA come from all parts of the country. So there are people who come from very remote areas where um, even television may not, uh, you know, be very easily available or they, certainly haven't had access to books and newspapers. So there you have a you have a, a group which is diverse and I'm glad that both Mariam and Marjan talk about diversity in their work and the fact that they are um, investigating diversity through what they're doing. I think that that is something that was part very much part of the way that one, at least I did my teaching, was to bring in people's experiences, whether it was a student who lived in a house where there was a mud floor in Sindh, or whether it was a student who came 
I have to walk seven hours to get to a bus stop because they lived in the mountains or whether they were very privileged and lived, came from Karachi, from you know upper middle class families. But inside, every artist is unsure, they're investigating things. So, but the thing is, how seriously do you think about your world? How do your ideas reflect these thoughts? And both of these artists have indicated from the way that they read their own work is to, um, is to how, it, how it succeeds in being a work of its time. It talks about its time. So we can, we can see whether that is, um, what is something that uh, is important. At least in all of my teaching, I have tried very hard um, to, to make artists aware that they, they don't live on mountain tops. <laughs> thank yeah, you. I, yeah, thank oh, you sorry. so much. Oh, I, I was just going to say, it's, um, thank you so much for this uh, answer. And I, I really, I agree with you. There is, there's uh, this hopeful, um, you know, even in, in conditions of, um, forced, uh, forced or, uh, maybe not so forced migration and under conditions of um, difficulty and hardship, there is also a very hopeful sense of resilience in, in, these, uh, in this work that uh, um, you see the, you know, the resilience of nature and the resilience of, of uh, uh, the human figures who have migrated uh, of taking their place and, everyday life you know it's there's there's so many you know an ordinary day and it's the ordinary day is such a different day than a, an ordinary uh, you know <laughs> the ordinary day is such a different day <laughs> actually in these in, in in this work um so anyway i just wanted to thank uh thank both of you uh for this and also uh, uh dr Hish <laughs> Thank you so much, Nagar John. Um, I would open now like the floor for uh, some questions. Um, there is already one question that we have from uh, Alexandra, um, and it is for Marjon. Uh, she writes, uh, this is a question from Marjon, uh, sorry, you, you can't, yeah, uh, who I met when she was working in Virginia. The question is, has the physical landscape of the West started to enter into your work? If yes, how does it appear? If no, could you comment? Uh, so actually, yeah, I'm really happy about this question. Uh, Alexander is actually one of the really good friends that I made during my time uh, there. Uh, so. Um, I must say, when I uh, went to Virginia, for me, the landscape was really similar. It was also a Virginia Center for Creative Arts. It's in a small city, Amherst. And um, I also uh, earlier lived in a small city in Bavaria. Um, uh, so for me, it was actually really similar. So I was finding myself totally in the same nature. It's It's really similar. So I was more uh, seeing the similarities like than comparing uh, just like um, being there I, I was also sometimes surprised by the um, birds and animals which were different there were like really amazing like red birds that were crossing uh, during our stay so in the beginning I must say I was yeah more looking at the references from my memory so I wasn't paying attention to the nature uh, around me that was also really similar. I was feeling like, oh, I'm still in, in Germany in the small uh, city. Uh, so, but by the end, uh, the sixth week, which I was there, I actually, my last work, I was uh, seeing the effect slowly in my work. Also, I was, um, I, I made a series, uh, I was working on uh, the exhibition um, conference of bird also uh, before that. So, I was thinking a lot uh, by looking at the surroundings. I made a series with those birds of Virginia. and But I could feel uh, that difference uh, also in the tone of the 
um, colors that I used, the paintings that I again brought uh, back. So yeah, definitely it had uh, um, like its own effect in my uh, new new works. Also, yeah, the ones that I'm making now, it's uh, it can have a, a subconscious effect from that time. Yeah, I hope I answered to the question. Wonderful, thank you so much, uh, Marjan. Um, you can type your questions in the Q and A box. Um, are there any further uh, questions uh, for our discussions? Until we get further questions, please feel free. Like, um, if there are any questions you have for each other, maybe to post them also. Yes, I would like to ask Marjan something, if I may. Go ahead. Um, because, um, you know, the thing is that I'm very curious about why she decided to do ceramics, because to me that is so far distanced um, from your experience earlier. And I was just wondering if, well, what was the, the uh, the you know the the inspiration the instigation or was it simply that it was just the opportunity so you took it uh, thank you for the question and thank you for your comments uh, earlier um so actually uh, to be honest it was a decision that i took an opportunity uh, that came along so i was uh, at that time uh, actually doing uh, the masters in uh, nca uh, really opened us, actually, me and Mariam, to explore different mediums. So starting with installation and uh, with ceramic department of uh, NCA, uh, we couldn't do much. But uh, then I, I was really interested in exploring in different mediums. So for me, this was actually taking risk because the title of the master was also like uh, master's in ceramic design. So like also uh, some people... Uh, especially in Pakistan, they, they thought I'm just going to make pots or that's it, that's a ceramic design. So I was a bit afraid of that step and I hope that I can do uh, visual arts. But when I went there, I saw it's really open, you can do whatever you want. So then I, I was really happy to explore this medium. And I was also feeling sad and nostalgic sometimes because I moved to a smaller place and I didn't have a studio. I switched to smaller scale in my paintings. I was just doing um, watercolors, uh, the, the times that I had the opportunity because I didn't have a studio for painting. And I also asked the college if they can provide, they were like, no, it's just a ceramic. So I was bound to do ceramic, which was a good two intensive year. Just in between, I was having a, a doing a residency in 2019 in Poland, and it was a painter's residency. So over there, I was just feeling so happy that we also were uh, got some fund to uh, order whatever material we want. So it was just like running back to painting for an intensive two, uh, three weeks. And I made a lot of works at that time. So yeah, I, I must say it was a taking the step and the risk. So I was just spontaneously kind of I was like, okay, I go for it. I, I just uh, do it. Yeah. But that was a very good decision. <laughs> very good. Um, we have uh, one more question from uh, Catherine, and um, this is a question for um, Mariam John. She's asking regarding the miniatures: Have you considered doing any uh, of them on bone? And she also said that you two are geniuses, and she loves it all of it. <laughs> Thank you, Catherine. Uh, actually. I've never thought about it, <laughs> like, uh, uh, but, uh, you know, for me also, like, uh, I mean, I haven't had a lot of changes in my medium, like Marjan, like, you know, that uh, she, like, you know, moved to ceramics and then, you know, she did installation uh, also. So, I mean, I think maybe, like, you know, if like uh, it can change like you know the medium by time maybe if i'm like i have a new ideas then maybe yeah <laughs> like i i was painting you know before i was just painting really a small 
small miniatures, like, you know, uh, just making a small painting. And then uh, I moved on into making bigger paintings, like, you know, the sunflower was suddenly a huge painting. So, uh, yeah, like, it can change with time. <laughs> I was just thinking that um, in these very difficult times, it's sometimes good to to take the words of a poet. <laughs> and um, because we are all artists, writers, musicians, filmmakers, we think about what we are doing in this world these days, especially. And I just want to do a little quote, if you will allow me, read a little quote from um, what my father, who was a poet, Faiz Ahmad Faiz, um, he was constantly asked, what is the role of an artist? And um, his answer has always inspired me and I've shared it with artists in other parts of the world. And so he said, when I'm asked, what is the role of an artist? My answer is and would be, we are the offspring in the direct line of the descent of the magicians and the sorcerers and the music makers of old. In times gone by, these ancients of ours could make the rain come down with their incantations. And with their songs, they could make the deserts bloom. And they not only implicitly believed that they had these powers, their community believed it too. This is because they found for the hopes and fears of their people, for their dreams and longings, words and music that the people could not find for themselves. And by blending their collective will to a desired end, they would sometimes make the dream come true. So that is who we are. We are the inheritors of this magic and the power of that magic in big ways or small. And depending on the intensity of love our hearts possess or the anguish we share with an anguished world, on the measure of our strength to defy what is evil, and to uphold what is good. And thus, as a writer or an artist, although I run no state and command no power, I'm entitled to feel that I'm my brother's keeper and my brother is the whole of mankind. And this is the relevance to me of peace, of freedom, of detente, and of the elimination of the nuclear menace. But out of this vast brotherhood, the nearest to me and the dearest, are the insulted and humiliated, the homeless and the disinherited, disinherited, the poor, the hungry, and the sick of heart. So I think we should know what our role is. There's seriously, this is the most beautiful ending to a truly um, beautiful presentation and panel discussion. I thank you all from the bottom of my heart for your contribution, for your time, and um, for your commitment to be here and listen to each other. Um, thank you so, so much, everyone. Um, be safe, take care, and um, inshallah b'khair, see you all. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you to all our beautiful panelists, Marjan, Mariam, Ostad, uh, Salima Hashmi, and Ostad, Negar Mutahede, and for Griffin for managing the technique. Thank you, everyone.